All right. Um, this is going to be kind of a messy video. I'm going to try my best. Um, I haven't made a video, like a YouTube video in a very long time, so I don't know if I'll be good at talking to the camera. Uh, I'm using my smartphone and a shitty little bendable tripod that was like seven bucks. Um, I've wanted to make YouTube videos for a while, as I think most people my age do, and um, been having a, a real rough time lately with my health. Um, I've been out of work for almost six months. Um, someone, my immediate family, my father-in-law just passed away a couple weeks ago. Um, it's been very rough around here, and I just kind of thought carpe diem. I might as well do, like, while I have the time, might as well do stuff while I can, you know, thinking about life stuff. So, um, my goal with this is I just want to do, like, a weekly show. It's kind of like a, um, like a video diary or something. I'm going to be very, uh, open, I think, very candid, because I'm going to make it, like, I expect no one to watch it, and hopefully people will. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, but I want to do, like, a talk show. I've always wanted to host a talk show. Obviously, I don't think I'm going to have guests ever, maybe. Um, but I'm going to go over stories. I have a notebook and, um, been collecting stories of things I find interesting, like news and that I want to talk about. Um, so I'll give over whatever facts I have collected and then my opinion. Um, and, um, um, I thought about maybe doing a music segment like most I don't know, because I could do like a cover or a song at the end of every show, but I don't know. We'll see. Though I wrote a little tiny baby tune to start it off. I don't have a name for the show. We're just going to go with the show for now. When you're up and down and you're over and out, you'll listen to your friend singing around. This is the show. jump into it. I have, I wanted this video originally to come out like a week ago, so I've collected a little more things. Some, some of these are kind of old by now, I think. Um, I have 14 things to go over. Um, I've been very depressed. It's been hard to get out of bed and do stuff um, and stay motivated. Uh, I have a neck injury and a foot injury. Um, still don't know exactly what's wrong. It's probably nerve damage or something. I'm still going to doctors to try to figure it out. Um, so everything's just very uncomfortable all the time. I think that's why it might look like I'm an ostrich right now with my head low because it's hard for me to move my neck and do things. But I've been getting better, actually. So that's a silver lining. Let's see. Um, my first story here, I'm just wanted, I wanted to get it out of the way. I want to do it first is Amber Heard because it's all over the place. Everyone's heard of it. Um, I'm not going to rehash anything that people don't already know. Just stuff I heard um, recently that I think is interesting is that she's apparently been recast in Aquaman and something called Lost Kingdom. I'm not sure what that is. Um, I should have looked it up beforehand, but I just didn't feel like it. Um, but I'm not a fan of the Aquaman movies at all. So I, I'm a big DC fan. I like DC comics more than I like Marvel comics. Um... I have a Green Lantern tattoo. Um, I do read both uh, DC and Marvel, and I'll get into some comics on this. Actually, I have a, one thing I'm going to review on here. Um, but Aquaman um, 1 was all right. It wasn't a bad movie. It's like a popcorn movie, like maybe like a 5 or 6. I don't remember what I rated it. Um, I don't think I'd ever watch it again. Uh, I'll probably see the second one just to see it, but I don't... Um, expect to like it at all they cut her out apparently they're cutting out all of her scenes and and doing reshoots and adding in a new actress um i got most of these stories um are from either collected from other youtube videos or reading uh articles and stuff um online uh maybe i'll cite sources next time i don't know uh, i'm not gonna lie uh if i don't feel like doing something if i'm lazy i'm just not gonna do it i'm just gonna do this however i want to do it so uh, I'll just see how I feel about things as things progress. Um, have an alleged quote um, from a WB insider that says, Warner Brothers decided to recast Amber Heard's role after screen testing the movie. They will be doing reshoots with Jason Momoa and Nicole Kidman. Um, and Amber is attempting to repeal her case um, as she can't afford the $8.3 settlement that was levied against her. 
Um, and also what I think is funny, a little interesting thing, there's these pictures, uh, the next part I have here, um, there's pictures of her in a TJ Maxx shopping, like shopping at a TJ Maxx looking like all sad. Like, I don't even know if it's makeup or how she does it, but she's got those sunken in uh, dumb bitch eyes uh, with, the, with, the, with the, the gray around and she looks so upset and so lost. Um, and well, she is an actress, I guess, uh, allegedly. Um, uh, and it, and then the, the article I was reading was saying, oh, like most, the consensus for most people is that it is a, a fake photo shoot for sympathy, which I believe. And, um, I just think it looks hilarious. Uh, it's these photos of her, like off the shoulder at a rack, like, like, oh no, you've seen me. You've seen me shopping at TJ Maxx. I'm so poor. And also how fucking rude. Um, that if that's, it was, it was TMZ who captured her, I believe. Um, if it was who got the shot, I mean, and if it, if it was her intention to, to gain sympathy by shopping at a TJ Maxx, how dare you by saying that people who shop at TJ Maxx are poor? Cause as far as I know, it's like, I've been to TJ Maxx a couple times. I don't normally go to TJ Maxx, but I don't think it's that like, I think the prices are probably more than not what I'd pay for a shirt, but all my clothes are from Goodwill. So. I don't know. Um, she has a tell all book deal. I don't have the, um, I think I, I feel like I saw the number, but I didn't write it down. I feel like I should have, but she's, she's got a tell all book deal. And, um, there was a quote from her saying that she felt the, the tell all book deal will have information of, um, from her diaries and from therapy sessions, like between her and her therapist, which is okay, girl, go ahead and air yourself out. But, um, uh, she, she believes that if the jury could have read, uh, uh, her diary and her therapy session notes and, and known more about that stuff that it would have went differently that she would have won and she wouldn't owe 8.3 million. Um, and, uh, um, and, and just in closing with that though, um, I don't think she's a great actress. I don't have anything against her per se. Um, but I just think she took a fat L. I think she needs to, uh, do a complete turn and maybe come out and own up to it and try like if she wants to save her career because as far as I'm you know she's like going to be a Tara Reid she's going to be in like Sharknado 20 or something like that her career is over as far as I see it um now the next ones are really cool um next story um this is a little late this is one of the one of those stories that I knew um would be uh kind of hindered by how long it took me to get this to do sit down and do this just because I just could I just couldn't bring myself to do it um but Berserk, can I have here, this is before, the, there's two new chapters of Berserk out. This is before they came out. I was just saying Berserk continuing one year after the death of Kentaro Miura. Um, it's really exciting. Um, it's supervised by uh, Koji Mori, author of Holy Land and uh, Jisatsu, uh, Jisatsu To. Um, I haven't read either, either of those. I saw a video by, um, here, YouTube uh, recommend, smaller, not smaller YouTube, but he's not like, doesn't have millions of subscribers, but there's a YouTuber called uh, Scram Scamboli Reviews, and uh, maybe I'll put a link in the description or something. Um, uh, he makes really good, um, anime and manga content. Um, and I was, I, I was watching one of his manga videos, top 10 mangas that you should read or something like that. And, uh, he was talking about Holy Land and it seems really cool. Um, I saw the art was good in that. Um, and it, it is kind of berserk-esque. It's sane and it's, it's like a little bloody and stuff, you know, a little more mature. Um, so I thought that was cool to hear that, 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 that guy is in, is in charge of berserk now. Apparently he was uh, close friends with Kentaro. Um, and let's see, he, I have a quote from him saying, I think people with good intention or good, uh, intuitions would realize by now that I know the story for Berserk up to the very end. Still, I cannot say that I can draw it because I know, I know it, that it, that is only because the genius Kentaro Miura can write a masterpiece like Berserk. However, a great responsibility has fallen on me. <clears throat> That's the end of the quote. Now I read the two chapters um, that have come out, and um, they they weren't bad. It's 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 mostly uh, art. There's not a lot of dialogue. I don't know if the dialogue is gonna suffer. Probably will. You know, I don't know exactly what will happen. Um, I I'm glad. I am glad that they're continuing. I'd rather it see get some kind of continuation, some kind of work done onto it instead of just being lost to the ether and just being un an unfinished masterpiece. I do have the mark of the brand tattoo back here. So, or actually on the side, 
um, it's important to me that it gets done. Um, uh, and so far so good. And, and as things progress, I'll definitely bring it up again in future episodes and we'll see if it gets bad, I'll talk about it. If it gets good, I'll talk about it. You know, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, uh, they do a good job with that. But the way manga is run, that industry, um, which is crazy, but I also think it's super cool how they all learn in their sensei styles and stuff and the person they work for and they basically start drawing the manga for them. That's cool. Um, so there's, I feel like that lends itself to getting the, the work, the piece of work done. Um, here's a big story. Uh, I don't know if this video is going to be long because uh, we're on the third story and some of these things I can't help but tr ramble over. Uh, Chris Hemsworth uh, confirms that Thor Love and Thunder was, is his final MCU movie, which I think most of us uh, expected. Um, and Taika Waititi confirms with a quote here, this is the passing of the torch. And that's the end of the quote. And the rest of, uh, uh, of what I read is stated that Natalie Portman will officially be replacing Chris Hemsworth as Thor. Um, how do I feel about this? Um, I think it was my girlfriend or something. I can't remember who it was recently. Someone said that they don't think Natalie Portman's a great actress. Uh, she's all right, you know, I know, I'm trying to think, I can't even actually think of anything she's in right now off the top of my head other than like Star Wars, I think, um, but she's not bad, like she's fine, I don't have a problem with her, um, I don't have a problem with the, with, uh, the Jane Foster Thor storyline as a, uh, legacy character thing, and, um, although it is part of Diversity Marvel, which I do have a problem with in the way that they go about some of their things, um, I, I read Jane Foster Thor, the whole run and I enjoyed it. Um, uh, uh, I, I shouldn't say whole run because she's still, when's the last time I read Thor? She's still Thor, I think. Um, or, or I, the way I read comic books, um, uh, the way I read comic books is, uh, I read, um, from month to month. Uh, but I'm, but like not as they come out. I have a list on my computer, which maybe I'll make a video about it because it's pretty interesting. I'm in 2018 right now uh, for both DC and Marvel. And what I do is I'll go on my Marvel side and I'll read uh, like one storyline of each comic or whatever, like four or five issues, wherever the storyline, however the storyline is long. And then come, then go over to DC and read like the month of comics and stuff and go back and forth in, until everything's at like the same timeline. So I'm reading everything as it would come out in release order, basically. Um, and like for events and things. Um, I just like to do it at my own pace, you know? I do a lot of things at my own pace. That's how I live my life. <laughs> um, uh, so, like, I'm okay with it, but I don't know. Um, the MCU is, like, in rocky waters. Although I don't think it's over. A lot of people are saying it's dead and stuff. They're making more shit than they previously did. I mean, there's more movies already, I think, in... I can't remember where I read something or saw something. That there's more movies in this phase than there has been in, like, one and two combined or something like that. Something like that. Um, uh, but we'll see what happens with that. Hopefully it's good. Uh, I'm excited for the movie. I'll see it next week. I'm sure it's going to be great. Um, PS Plus. Go over that really quick. Uh, uh, I've I've only seen... I haven't seen any praise for it. I've only seen negatives. Um, but I've been using it and it's revolutionized everything. It's great for me. I love it. Um, so you have The Essential, which is the the old PS Plus where it's uh, 10 bucks a month um, to 60 bucks a year. And you get free monthly games and you get to use online uh, access for games. Then you have uh, Extra, which is $14.99 a month and $100 a year. And you get, uh, it says nearly uh, almost 400 downloadable games, um, which is a very good, uh, in my opinion, a very good um, uh, pool of games to choose from. There's a lot of stuff to do there. And if you're like me, if you have ADD like me, I like to play a game for an hour and I might not touch it again for a couple months. It's really difficult for me because I do play a lot of video games and I love JRPGs. So I never, I've almost never finished any of my JRPGs. I get like most of the way through or I'm still working on them to this day and stuff. I think the only JRPG I've finished is if you count Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 and uh, Final Fantasy 10 and like, yeah, that's, I think that's it. Um, but I have the premium. I upgraded to, I took, like I had a normal... PlayStation Plus, and then I upgraded to Extra, tried it out for a bit, then upgraded to Premium to try that out. Um, the Premium is $17.99 a month and $120 a year, and you get the classic uh, streaming collection, and you get game trials. I haven't used the game trials. I don't like game demos because I don't want to play a game for an hour if I don't own it. I'm weird about that. I don't want to play it and see if I like it because, although I know that's dumb, I don't want to, like, play it unless I'm getting the full experience or something, you know, especially if I can't afford, I can't afford to buy a brand new game right now, a $60 game. So I'm not going to go play 
uh, the game trial for like Horizon Dawn Forbidden West and then what pick, like okay so I like it and then pick it up in a year or something and replay something I've already done I don't I don't like to replay stuff I try really hard not to replay stuff unless it's um, specific games that I like a lot because there's so many games to play and so little time and you're only getting older every second um, uh, moving on from that oh actually before I go on um, the streaming thing I was worried about the streaming thing and if you don't have good internet I mean I see how it's a problem but if you do have serviceable internet the streaming is amazing. You don't have to download anything. You can just stream. It automatically saves your files to the cloud. It saves so much time, especially because downloading a game could take like four hours. Um, I love the streaming because it's been working for me. And you can play old classic PlayStation games stuff. Like original Ape Escape. Like, come on, dude. Um, five should be quick. Um, I want to talk about the Warrior Celtics 4-2 uh, finals. I'm a Celtics fan. Um, I have a custom jersey with my name on it. Um, I watch, uh, I watch the, f I don't watch basketball every season game or anything like that. I try to watch every Lakers Celtics game. Um, I didn't get out much this year to go watch basketball and stuff. Um, but I did watch the finals, uh, and, um, it was pretty rough. Um, the, the Draymond Green, um, I just never had a problem with him until this, fi these finals. He is just, he's a bad sport. He is rude. He is crass. He is, a, I think he's a bad person. Because he's just, they're just playing basketball. I understand it's its the finals. It's the height of the sport. It is your moment to shine. It is everything you play for to get a ring. But Draymond Green was just in everyone's face. Like, he should have been ejected so many times. He, he should have got a flag. I don't even remember if he even got a flag, but he should have. He was pushing people. You know, he was, he was being a douchebag. He was being a piece of shit. And um, it was rough to watch my favorite Celtic right now, Jason Tatum, uh, the rising star. Like, he struggled so hard. Um he had a really hard time and you could see on his face the frustration and he just looked like a like a kick puppy it was pretty pathetic the last couple games like the whole everything was just bad it was hard to watch as a Celtics fan especially when they lost in their home arena um but the one silver lining one thing I liked a lot was watching uh um Andre Iguodala pull Jason Tatum aside when he's walking to the locker room and you can kind of hear over the the mic a little bit the, the newscaster and all that kind of hear him saying like oh like you know you're a great ball player you're a great ball player he's like smacking his chest and you can tell he's giving him a pep talk which is cool to see one superstar you know leading the, like giving some something to the next generation um and congratulations to the warriors and really cementing their legacy with the fourth championship with that team uh good for them but hopefully next year my team makes it again i don't know we'll see um i do a quick little movie review um the northman um, uh, I give it a seven to five to eight out of 10. Uh, this movie, uh, surprised me. I didn't think I'd like it as much as I did. I really did like it. Um, Robert Eggers, it's his third feature length film. Um, and everything I've seen so far, reviews of, of like normal people on websites and things like that. And I watched the red letter media video about it. It seems that people who don't like cinema, people who aren't cinephiles, people who, um, Go, just go see every Marvel movie and whatever horror movie comes out in October. People who don't think critically um, don't get it. But it's not like there's anything to get, in my opinion. It's not like a, you don't have to use your brain for this movie either. It's 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 a pretty classic revenge story, and it's set in Viking times and stuff. And I don't even think it's like his other films, like Lighthouse, where you have to fucking you know no old English and shit. To understand what the fuck those guys are saying or what's going on or have subtitles on so you can catch what they're saying and stuff or have any sailor knowledge stuff like that now this movie is pretty accessible in my opinion and i think that was the point i think i believe there was studio in interference he wasn't able to make it completely i wanted because there was studio interference to make it a blockbuster um but it failed because people are dumb and there's nothing you can do about that and good movies are less and less and there's nothing we're gonna be able to do about that but everything else i've seen other people who like movies who are movie fans who care about cinema uh, seem to enjoy it. Um, no one, I don't think I've seen anyone say it's amazing or anything, but it's a good movie. And I put it on the modern classics collection on my letterbox. Um, I also ha have it in a notebook somewhere where I have my favorite movies, um, uh, movies that I think have value from basically when I was born till now in the modern, uh, cinema landscape. Um, and I'll put my letterbox and my other socials and stuff in the, uh, description after this video. Um, next is Fire Island, another surprise movie. Um, I didn't, I gave this a seven out of 10. I didn't put this, uh, um, I didn't put this in my modern classics collection. 
Uh, maybe I'll rewatch it in the future and change my mind. I don't think it deserved a spot, but it was a good movie. It was fun. I watched it with my girlfriend and her mom, and it was uh, Bowen Yang. Gotta love Bowen Yang. Um, uh, but I looked up the director, Andrew Ann, or Ann, third film. He had two other movies, Spa Night and Driveways. They seem to be um, Asian-centered uh, films. Um, and I thought Spa Night looked interesting. I might watch that. That looked interesting. I think it, I believe it said it was a, a, about a Korean uh, boy coming to terms with his sexuality. Um, it, looked, it looked good um, for some reason. I can't remember why it looked good to me, but it looked interesting, so I might watch that. Um, I'm going to talk about the quarry really quick. I played the quarry co-op mode with my girlfriend and her brother. Um, uh, switching controllers over and over um, for characters we had control of, or whatever. And this game is amazing. This game's dope. Um, I don't, I don't give, I don't put scores on games. I never scored a game. I'm not a game reviewer. Um, I never really thought about myself reviewing games or anything like that. Even though I do play games most of the day, but um, I'll just say it's worth a play. It's worth a play for sure. If you like horror movies, if you like story games, um, or choose your own adventure stuff like that. And it's got a great cast like uh, David Arquette um, from Scream. Uh, Ted Raimi, the brother of Sam Raimi, director of Spider-Man and uh, Doctor Strange 2 and Evil Dead. Uh, the dude from My Name is Earl, Ethan Suppley, the brother, the big one. And uh, Ariel Winter from Modern Family. Now she's all old and bodacious and stuff. She's looking good in those uh, tights and shorts she's wearing. Um, and I love the co-op aspect of it that you 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 can do it online as well. We pick people. Um, people pick their characters forever. And if it's couch co-op, you just hand the control over, which is great. Like classic times where I like, it gives you the prompt. Okay. It's player two's character. Now hand the controller over. And it was a lot of fun to go through. Uh, pretty stressful though. People get mad at each other. Like don't kill, you know, no one wanted their characters to die. I didn't lose any characters. They each lost one character piece, but almost a perfect run. I'm going to go through it again and go for a completionist run and do everything I can. I just haven't gotten to it yet, but I will eventually do it. Um, but there was one, uh, one con with it was there's a lot of visual bugs, a lot of textures, uh, not loading in properly a lot of there was some pop in and stuff there was some shit wrong with it um and i'm not sure if i because i played it on release day for my birthday it was a, a gift um which i just turned 23 it was a gift from my girlfriend and her brother they bought it and the deluxe edition the dlc and all that stuff for me as a birthday gift um and played it on release day so i don't know if there's an, a visual bug update um or if it's because it's on ps4 we played and it's meant to be on ps5 or something which i still don't think is an excuse uh this is a triple a 60 dollar game uh games should not be shipped broken they should, they should be purchasable at a playable state, and it should just, it's just not acceptable. That's the only problem I have with it. Um, maybe I'll give an update when I replay it eventually, or check for an install an update or something, and let you know if it's visual bugs or fix. Uh, really quickly, there's not too much I, I, I want to say about this, I don't think, but <clears throat> I read um, Batman Kings of Fear. It's a six-part uh, miniseries. Um, by written by Scott Peterson, uh, Peterson, illustrated by Kelly Jones. Kelly Jones' art is amazing. I love it. It's this very classic, like old school, um, <clears throat> gothic Batman feel. <clears throat> and um, he's best known for his work on uh, what is it? um Dracula, Dracula, Batman, vampire stuff. Which I can't remember. I think I've heard of it. I know I watched the animated movie or something. I think about it. Um, but I think I'm going to read that next and <coughs> check it out because I do like his, uh, his art a lot. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> uh, uh, story 11, One Piece episode 1000. Um, I don't know if I really feel like taking off my get up here, but yeah, you're not going to be able to see it. I can't get it done, but I have the uh, One Piece Black X tattoo on my arm from the Alabama fan. And I know episode 1000 came out... Um, uh, almost uh over a year ago i believe um i i watch it as i watch it i do it when i want to do it i get around to it but i'm at 1003 i think right now but episode 1000 was great just a little celebration they played we are which we all love as one piece fans it's the best um that is the best uh one piece song no, no you know hands down no question um they did a little character service for every character and they showed, um, they're going through the, the, the crew and stuff. And I didn't realize, I guess, but, um, Jim Bay is officially the 10th member of the Straw Hats, which is all right. It's cool. But I also want them to, I, uh, don't call me a bad One Piece fan. I can't remember the name of the, the bunny girl, but, uh, the, the mink, uh, from, uh, planet, not planet, sorry, island, Zo I can't remember what it's called, Zoro, I think, Zone, I don't remember, someone with Z. But, um, I wish she was a full-on member too, because she's cool with her lightning powers and stuff. But Jim Bay being joined the crew, okay cool with it not mad at it um, and these are some last minute additions here uh maria elizabeth winstead joining mcu possibly as 
Abigail Brand, Commander of S.W.O.R.D. Uh, for the uninitiated, that is Sentient World's Observation and Response Department. Um, that's cool. That's probably going to tie into Captain Marvel shit, Alpha Flight stuff, maybe. Well, it's not going to happen. It's definitely not going to happen. But, um, because Alpha Flight's hanging out in space with uh, Captain Marvel in the comics, so maybe they'll, they'll pull in the, the Canadians there, and there's a chance for Wolverine, but there's always a chance for Wolverine, and it's not going to happen until it happens. So, who knows? Uh, quickly, I'll go over Obi-Wan. I don't have a, uh, it's a show, not a movie, so I don't have a score for it, but I'll say it's like, a, I'll say it's like a five, maybe. Um, <clears throat> uh, it sucked. It really sucked. Um, it's not hard to make Star Wars, uh, good guys. It's Star Wars. They have fucking, uh, laser swords. I mean, yeah, let's get some light. It's Star Wars. How hard is it to take a, a, a wizard in space with a goddamn sword made out of light and make that interesting? You have millions of dollars, billions of dollars to make that happen. Uh, <clears throat> make it happen. Uh, I don't, there's no excuse. The only cool thing, uh, the only time I felt any elation during the whole debacle was when, uh, um, Hayden Christensen was on screen, um, when, uh, and the, the final fight between Vader and Obi-Wan was super cool. I love that. Um, that was good writing in my opinion. I mean, it's cheesy and stuff, but that's, I feel like Star Wars should be a little cheesy like comics are and things like that. The camp, the melodrama, I think really elevates it. Actually. I think it just cuts to the core, gets quickly to the root. You know, I don't think it has to be that deep. Not that you can't do deeper things, you know, we'll never get like a, I'm sure what everyone wants. We'll never get a boots on the ground clone trooper war story like Saving Private Ryan style, which we would, I'm sure we would all love, but it will never happen because Disney doesn't like to make money, which I know sounds wrong, but it's true. They just, people don't know how to handle these properties, which I think is amazing. Uh, and then I think it's just because of all the layers of people it has to go through. It's the same thing that's going on in the Disney uh, cinematic universe, or not Disney, sorry, um, uh, DC cinematic universe that's so broken. Like, how hard is it? There's already good things written. There's already stuff there for you. Just adapt it and... They fail almost every time. Um, uh, last thing I'll talk about. Um, Elvis. The new Elvis movie. Um, I gave it a 7 out of 10. Um, might change in the future. I don't know. My scores kind of fluctuate. I don't like... To, I almost never give anything over 7. It's hard. It's a really good uh, movie. Um, maybe a 7.5. Um, uh, it's uh, it's on my Modern Classics collection. I loved it. I I, I didn't... It kind of had to grow on me. Um it's, it's very artsy fartsy, not artsy fartsy. That's the wrong term. It's very correct. Well, it's crazy. I looked at my sister in the theater and was like, this is fucking crazy because they're doing weird shit all the time, but it's directed by, um, Baz, uh, Lunarum, Lunarum. I don't know how to say, say his name. Lerman. Uh, he made the great Gatsby. He made the Romeo and Juliet with Leonardo DiCaprio. So of course, um, if you, which I, I didn't look up the director or anything until after I didn't realize. Um, but the movie hit me like a truck at the end. Um, my dad loved Elvis. It was his favorite musician. My dad did his hair like Elvis. My dad looked like Elvis. And so I wasn't expecting all that at the end. And I started wailing like a baby in the theater. I've never cried that loud in public. It was super embarrassing. <clears throat> but the movie won me over. Um, I felt like I only enjoyed it more and more as it went on. Uh, which was surprising. So I recommend going to see that as well. Um, oh, I skipped over one thing. Actually, there's, there's only one thing I missed. I don't know how I missed it. Um, Jurassic Park. Or Jurassic World. Where did I give Jurassic World? Jurassic World, I gave a 6 out of 10. Um, my opinion, the best of the Jurassic Worlds. I've heard a lot of people say it's the worst of the Jurassic Worlds. Um, but I, I like Jurassic Park movies. At least the first time. I don't know if you can rewatch them. Maybe once every five years. You have to try really hard to forget things. You're never going to forget the first one. Um, the first one's a good movie. But I mean, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Uh, they're... You get drunk and hang out and watch it or watch it with a kid or something. Uh, it'll be more enjoyable. Like, I'm sure I'll watch it with my kids one day and enjoy it with them. And they'll like it because they're young. But it's definitely, I feel like it's a kid's movie. It's a family movie. Um, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Uh, my poor girlfriend passed out in the theater during it because she doesn't, it was our first Jurassic Park movie. She didn't care at all. Yeah, well, that's not true. We watched the first Jurassic Park together and she fell asleep 10 minutes in and then we saw the last Jurassic Park movie and she fell asleep about an hour in. So she made it through half of it. Uh, but I, I don't know if I'd recommend going to see it. I don't think so. I think go see Northman, go see, go watch Fire Island on Hulu at home and go watch Elvis. Uh, and so that was all my stories I collected uh, for this episode. Um, 
I will definitely be collecting uh, more stories. I don't know when the next episode comes out. I want to try and go for every week. I don't have a day of the week it's going to happen. It's just going to happen when it happens because I'm lazy. Um, but as things go on and progress, uh, I, I do have a lot of ideas. I would like to make this better. I don't know how to edit. I'm going to learn how to edit. Um, I'm using my phone right now. I might get a camera eventually. Who knows? It's just going to be a little uh, hobby, little video diary thing for me to talk about things I like because I'm cooped up at home with no one to talk to really about anything while everyone's away at work and stuff and while I'm healing. Um, and I have a lot of ideas how I'd like to improve this uh, and a lot of ideas I like to do with this show. And if that happens, that's cool, but I don't expect anything. Uh, I'm just going to try and have fun with it. Um, so if you sat through this whole thing, uh, 30 minutes, damn, uh, thanks a lot. Um, I'm going to put uh, um, socials and things like that in my uh, uh, description, my Instagram, my letterbox. Um, and I'll put my cash app if you want to donate to. Why not? Uh, uh, so hopefully I'll see you in a week. Hopefully.